Imagine the digital world's strongest encryption is suddenly crackable. That's where we're headed, a digital Y2K for encryption. Experts warn that cryptographically relevant quantum computers could arrive in the next decade. In plain terms, quantum machines use superposition and entanglement to tackle math problems, like factoring, exponentially faster than today's PCs. The trouble is our current public key ciphers, RSA, ECC, Defi, Hellman, rely on those hard math problems. A large enough quantum could run Shor's algorithm to break them in hours or minutes instead of centuries. This isn't a theory. Governments and industries are already sounding the alarm and pushing for new standards. In fact, US agencies have set clear milestones. Phase out 112-bit classic ciphers by 2030 and adopt quantum resistance systems by 2035. The UK and EU have matching roadmaps with discovery phases by 2028, high priority migrations by 2030 to 2031, and full transitions by 2035. This is Zach, and you're watching Patch Notes. Quick shout out to the team behind the shoe, Video Deck. They're the folks who wrote, shot, and produced this whole thing. So if your company's trying to explain anything remotely complex or create stunning product demos, hit them up at videodeck.co. All right, back to your regularly scheduled cryptographic doom scrolling. Quantum computers aren't science fiction. Breakthroughs keep accelerating. IBM and Google have announced roadmaps aiming for fault tolerant machines in this decade. IBM's June 2025 update targets a 200 logical qubit quantum computer capable of running deep algorithms like Shor's by 2029. Google researchers too recently estimated that today's 100 qubit chips could force us to ditch current crypto by the 2030s. That prediction shook up Bitcoin's cryptography, which uses ECC and SHA-256, because both are vulnerable to quantum if someone builds a big enough processor. Indeed, voices across tech and finance are flashing warning signs. One analysis found that even standard security, AES-128, would effectively become as weak as a 64-bit key under Grover's algorithm, and AES-256 only drops to 128-bit strength. In other words, all encryption, from your chat apps to cloud servers, could be compromised. The industry mantra is, harvest now, decrypt later. Adversaries can hoover up encrypted data today, like financial records, medical images, messages, and store it, waiting to decrypt it once quantum tech arrives. Governments see this as a national security crisis. The US Commerce Department's NIST has been scrambling to manage the threat for years. Other bodies echo the urgency. In 2025, the EU rolled out a PQC roadmap with synchronized milestones. Strategies by 2026, high-risk migrations by 2030, full migration by 2035. Cisco's developers note that failure to act means a fundamental reassessment of all security levels, essentially rewriting the rules of digital trust. If you're liking this video so far, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us know what to make more of. And hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next one when it drops. So what does quantum resistant cryptography actually look like? Well, it turns out we don't need quantum computers to fight quantum computers. Post-quantum cryptography is built using classical math, just really clever math that quantum machines aren't good at solving. Instead of relying on problems like factoring big numbers or calculating discrete logarithms, which quantum algorithms can absolutely demolish, these new systems lean on math puzzles that even quantum machines struggle with. One of the leading approaches is something called lattice-based cryptography. Think of it as working on a multi-dimensional grid, like a really chaotic Rubik's cube, but it's stretched into hundreds of dimensions. These problems are notoriously hard to crack, even for a quantum computer. That's why two of NIST's top picks, Crystal's Kyber, which handles encryption, and Crystal's The Lithium, used for digital signatures, are both lattice-based. They rely on challenges like learning with errors or finding the shortest vector in a massive haystack of possibilities. Quantum shortcuts just don't exist for these, at least not yet. Then there's hash-based cryptography, which is basically the cockroach of the cryptographic world. It's been around forever, and it's really hard to kill. These schemes build digital signatures using layers of one-time hashes, sort of like stacking disposable logs that you throw away after using. Sphinx Plus is a great example. 
It's built entirely on collision-resistant hash functions like SHA-256, and quantum computers don't really have a trick for breaking those beyond brute force. So yeah, the keys and signatures are a bit chunky, but it's considered provably safe against quantum attacks. Finally, there are a few other categories, code-based cryptography, multivariate equations, stuff like that. Code-based algorithms like classic Michaelis are actually super fast, but they come with massive key sizes, sometimes hundreds of kilobytes, which makes them kind of awkward to deploy. Multivariate schemes like Rainbow were once promising too, until they weren't. Some of these were dropped after researchers found cracks in them. Remember Psych? That one got broken in a weekend. So for now, most of the focus is sticking with lattice-based and hash-based approaches. So that's the shape of the new crypto landscape. Weird math, high stakes, and no shortcuts for quantum to exploit. By late 2024, NIST had officially selected its first generation PQC standards. It finalized three algorithms, Kyber, Dilithium, and Sphinx as draft FIPS standards. These are the new building blocks of encryption and digital signatures. The journey to these new standards has been an eight year global effort. NIST opened a call for PQC proposals in 2016 and received 82 submissions worldwide. By 2022, it had whittled these down to a small set of finalists, including Kyber, Dilithium, Sphinx Plus, and Falcon, and in 2023 and 24 released draft specifications. The press release from August 2024 notes, researchers are racing to build quantum computers. These algorithms are ready for immediate use. In other words, NIST's work is the capstone of this cryptographic hardening. They even encourage system admins to start integrating them now, because full migration will take time. The three initial standards, now FIPS, are Crystals Kyber for encryption, Crystals to Lithium for signatures, and Sphinx Plus, a variant called SLHDSA for signatures. Kyber and to Lithium have been rebranded MLKEM and MLDSA to highlight their module lattice math. NIST is also testing backups. More KEMs and signatures on deck, announced through late 2024 and beyond. But NIST cryptographer Dustin Moody emphasizes there is no need to wait for future algorithms. The first three standards are the main event for now. The punchline, billions of devices and certificates may soon be updated under these new rules. This isn't just some quiet upgrade happening in the background. It's a full-on global race, one where governments, corporations, and entire economies are jockeying for control of the post-quantum future. Let's start with the US. The federal government has been pushing hard to prepare. In 2025, a White House directive told agencies to start switching to post-quantum encryption immediately, part of a broader national security strategy aiming for full adoption by the mid-2030s. Around the same time, the president also scrapped an older crypto-related executive order, signaling a reset on how Washington handles both encryption and digital assets. The message was clear. The clock's ticking, and the US doesn't want to be caught flat-footed. China, meanwhile, is taking a very different approach, but just as aggressively. In the same year, China Telecom announced what it called a quantum cryptography rollout. Under the hood, it's really a mix of quantum key distribution and post-quantum algorithms, but the headline was the same. They're locking down communications. Even pulled off a 1,000 kilometer quantum encrypted phone call. And beyond that, they built a massive fiber network linking cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Hefei, offering KQD protected services to banks and government agencies. It's part tech flex, part strategic land grab in the future of secure infrastructure. And the private sector isn't just watching from the sidelines. IBM, for example, says it's on track to build a fault tolerant quantum computer by 2029, one that could crack today's encryption standards wide open. Their roadmap includes modular chip designs and new error correction systems that claim to solve the big technical roadblocks. Google's also in the game. They hit quantum supremacy back in 2019 and have been scaling ever since. One of their engineers even warned recently that we might be underestimating how soon RSA could fall. The crypto world is paying attention. BlackRock mentioned quantum risk in its Bitcoin filings and some VCs are already telling startups to get their wallets quantum ready before it's too late. Across the Atlantic, Europe's taking the coordination route. The UK's on a similar timeline. 
That kind of alignment matters, especially for companies operating globally. They're now navigating overlapping regulations and trying to future-proof their systems under pressure. So yeah, this isn't just about math, it's about power. Who gets to write the rules for a post-quantum internet? And right now, the race is wide open. As with any tech gold rush, there are surprises. In politics, crypto means two things. One surprising move, in January 2025, the White House scrapped much of the previous administration's crypto asset strategy, signaling that digital currency regulation was being paused. Some media dubbed it as executive order pulling back crypto mandates. On the same street, a new executive order in June 2025 framed as cutting through the political football. It explicitly stripped out mandates unrelated to core cybersecurity and digital federal agencies to upgrade to post-quantum cryptography. In short, one hand is loosening the rules on blockchains and digital IDs, while the other is doubling down on quantum-safe encryption. It's a political pivot that surprised many in the security community. On the tech front, there have been tall claims too. Microsoft touted a major on a one-chip breakthrough in early 2025, but with scant proof drawing skepticism. Skeptics note that two decades of research still can't stabilize a useful quantum bit, let alone millions of them. In contrast, IBM's public roadmap is unusually concrete, laying out intermediate steps, with cute bird code names like Loon, Kookaburra, Starling, toward 200 logical qubits. The arrival of these timelines has triggered a mix of hype and caution. Some crypto experts say not panicking, while others warn of a scenario where just one breach could destroy trust in digital systems. So why all the fuss? Because encryption underpins the entire digital economy. As NIST notes, encryption carries a heavy load. It shields your emails, medical records, photos, financial transactions, even voting and national defense secrets. Today, we happily send data over the internet, believing it's locked tight to all but the intended recipient. But a sufficiently powerful quantum computer could sift through a vast number of potential solutions to break that lock almost instantly. In other words, the confidentiality of digital life is at risk. Long term, the implications are huge. Every institution will need to rebuild cryptography in a quantum age. Banks, hospitals, Internet of Things, elections, nuclear command and control. All those rely on keys and certificates that assume RSA ECC security. If nation states or hackers harvest encrypted archives now and wait for quantum, past secrets are vulnerable too. Think intelligence intercepts or private communications from years ago suddenly exposed. Privacy advocates worry about the loss of anonymity. Cybersecurity pros worry about the flood of new attacks on infrastructure. On the flip side, the transition to PQC could itself be bumpy. Bigger keys and slower algorithms mean network and performance overhead, at least during the transition period. In a nutshell, quantum-resistant cryptography is the shield we're building as the new siege engines are under construction. It's a story of strategy and suspense. Do we upgrade our defenses before the next wave of attackers arrives? The race is on. Governments and companies are pouring billions into quantum tech and PQC standards. Experts say the time to act is now. Otherwise, the encryption we all trust today could one day be the very thing that leaves us exposed. If you liked this video and found it useful, hit the like button so we know. And subscribe to catch the next deep dive when it drops. See you in the next one.